I've made other pies. Yeah. And I was like, I feel like I have to make one. And honestly, like, I really like blueberries. Me too. So I, I, I could see blueberry. But yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a good one. Yep. Hello, and welcome to Spooky Sips, where we put our love of horror movies into a podcast and sip some spirits along the way. I'm one of your hosts, Yvette, here with my co-hosts, Laura and Brianna. Hello. Hey. Okay, so we just came back from the theaters because we watched Heretic. Mm. Ooh. If you have been following us, you should know that we are a Utah-based podcast. We don't all live in Utah, but we're all from Utah. So we were like, we have to do this movie. Oh, yeah. Absolutely mandatory. So if you haven't seen it because it did just come out this past weekend, it's about two young missionaries that are forced to prove their faith when they knock on the wrong door and are greeted by a diabolical Mr. Reed, becoming ensnared in his deadly game of cat and mouse. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, dun. So I want, I am curious about like how you went into this movie because we've had two movies now that have big stars that have come out this last few months. We had Long Legs Mm -hmm. and then Heretic. So when Long Legs came out, I, there was so much marketing that like on my social media, I couldn't not see it. Like. Yeah. It was everywhere. And I feel like this one wasn't quite as much. It it was present, but like it was smaller clips, I felt like. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't like full ads. So when I went into into it, I really didn't know anything other than the fact that there were two missionaries going to a guy's house. That was it. Yeah. No, because I think I saw a trailer for Heretic. Honestly, it may have even been when I saw Long, long Legs. Like I remember it was a mm-hmm. while ago. Seeing the trailer being like, ah, yes, absolutely. I want to watch this. This looks amazing. But then I feel like recently, honestly, I feel like I've seen more just like people on like TikTok, you know, just like being excited about going to watch it. Like I haven't seen as many ads. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went into it with very low expectations because I was so disappointed in long legs that I, I didn't want to get my hopes up. But from the the brief preview that I only watched one preview one time, the brief mm-hmm. preview I did see, and just, you know, thinking about Hugh Grant being this dark villain, mm-hmm. I I was not expecting it to be good, but I was really just just deep in my soul hoping <laughs> yeah. that it was good. Uh also we should say that. Uh, Brianna and I went with our father, who is a priest. <laughs> yes, we did. And an ex-Mormon. An ex-Mormon. Well, so so Brianna and I also are ex-Mormon. You probably right. don't even remember at all being Mormon. I do for – I remember it a little bit. Yeah, I don't because I was like a toddler. Like I was yeah. little. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so as, as ex-Mormons and um, most of our family, especially on our dad's side, is Mormon – and most of my friends somehow in high school, it was weird because we weren't Mormon then. Like they, they were all Mormon. So I I have I've spent well, Utah. <laughs> well, well, no, this was in U- this was in Oregon. Oh, was, whoa. Was where my oh, best that's friends right. all you did school. have a lot of Mormon friends. No, my three best friends in high school were all Mormon. So I spent huh? more time at that's the young right. women's group and in like Mormon uh dances than I did not because mm-hmm. yeah, I just had a lot of Mormon friends. Um so I was like I was very intrigued by how this was going to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need to know the stats for like ex-Mormons who went to go watch this movie because the person next to me at the theater was like, I'm an ex-Mormon. I had to come to this. <laughs> like- Our theater was packed. Like I bought the tickets earlier in the week because I thought that would have been fine. There was only one option for three seats at oh that point gosh. because like it was sold out. So yeah, our my, theater was packed. My showing was sold out too. Yeah. Not only was it packed, but here's what I was really surprised by. The the mean age of the uh audience was quite old. Like yes. it was it was like, like old couples. Like our like dad's age. Elderly. Wait, really? Not elderly, but like it was well it no, was I like mean older people. Because <laughs> okay, side note. <laughs> 
we went out to dinner first. Mm -hmm. And if you're not from Utah and you're listening, just understand and know that anytime you want to drink, no matter your age, they have to scan your ID almost Mm -hmm. exclusively. Like, so we went to dinner. The liquor laws in Utah are crazy. Wild. Yeah. So we went to dinner with our dad and we got a bottle and the girl just asked for me and Laura's ID. You know, Mm -hmm. and like our dad made like a joke because he didn't get asked. And I was like, oh, dad, I was going to tell you, you got the senior discount when I bought your movie ticket. Oh, (laughs) And you could see he was just devastated. Why did you do that to him? (laughs) I was like, no, it's okay. You saved $2. (laughs) Oh, Oh, poor Jerry. You saved $2. (laughs) Yeah, but there, it seemed like a lot of older probably former mormons that mm-hmm. were um or lds uh, yes oh right or, yeah right. Members. Mm-hmm. but uh, that was the preferred although it's like yes. i don't know why it's like mormons just sticks you know lds yeah. is preferred yeah. <laughs> well because really it, that's reason like when yeah. we were growing up it was mormons like mm-hmm. yes technically that was latter day saints but they didn't refer to themselves as lds they were mm-hmm. Mormons, like yeah. That. It's kind of like a, it's kind of an mixed bag. I feel like so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I do remember. So, so I was I was talking about like my Mormon friends in high school. Um. So we we moved around a lot, and before we moved to Oregon, we were living in New York. But technically, yes, I was born in Utah, but I I didn't really consider myself from Utah because I was very young when we left Utah. Mm-hmm. But when we I remember when I met this new group of people, um, it was halfway through my high school, my freshman year of high school was when we moved. And so uh, these, you know, these, this group of girls, they were kind of nice and they were, you know, getting to know the new girl. And so they asked me where I was from and I said, oh, I'm from New York, but I was born in Utah. And the one girl was like, are you Mormon? She's like, that's our Mecca because they're Mormon. And she was like, I was like the most popular girl (laughs) For that little group yep. for a while, because I happen to be from Salt Lake, the land the of the people. Yep, <laughs> it was pretty cute, actually. <laughs> I was like, I'm not Mormon. I love it. You know, very few people are um, excited about Utah. It made me uh-huh. very cool. It gave so. Me- Give no, me, like, we usually cool don't voice. get like a cool reaction. We usually get like, "Oh, I'm sorry." No, no. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Mm-hmm. See, see, you don't get the cool points if you're not yeah, from Utah. That's, nope. that's usually the reaction. It's just, oh, <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. okay. No, it's true. <laughs> so that's kind of fun when people are excited. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. All right. Sorry, that was a side note, but <laughs> no. all right. So let's just start at the beginning because. <sighs> I have a lot of opinions about this opening scene, um, but the the scene opens and they're at a bus stop and they're sitting on a bus bench mm-hmm. and they're having a little cute conversation. <laughs> it's so, so good. I love the opening. It's a um, monologue, if you can call it that. Yeah. <laughs> like, here's the thing I feel about, and this is what our dad said too about the opening scene, was that like, if you know... People that are LDS from Utah, you'll understand that that is the most perfect depiction of yes. two young LDS girls. Like they yes. nailed it. I was like, either there has to be a writer or a producer or someone that is from Utah because, like, that is exactly how they talk. They talk. Like it was oh. perfect. Yeah, yeah. So neither of the writer, producer, directors. Um, it's kind of like this duo that has worked together on stuff. Neither of them is Mormon, but one of them did marry into a Mormon family. Okay. Uh, uh, so they he did not convert, mm-hmm. but okay. he definitely knows uh-huh. Mormons. And they okay. like have gone and done talks at like BYU and they've interviewed a lot of missionaries. Like they they put okay. in the work. Okay, you to, could tell. To get to know them. And both of the actresses are ex-Mormons. Oh, interesting. Really? Yeah. Mm. Which it just explains, it. especially I'm forgetting her, but the, the blonde oh. missionary, her, and they talk about it during the casting where it was like they kept coming back to her to be like, it's just like her mannerisms, her yes. accent, like everything. It's just so perfectly Mormon. And they realized that, yeah, she's an ex-Mormon. That, that's why she 
was no, so there were such little it. moments, especially with her, where I was like, mm-hmm. oh my God, this is so perfect. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just, it is, yeah, it's not it's like there's like a clear accent, but it's like the mannerisms, yeah, the, the, the way, way they talk, mm-hmm. everything she nailed, like they were both incredible, but she totally. nailed it. Yeah, no, because it is, it's hard to put your finger on it, but if you're, if you're part of that world or part of that world adjacent, I think you, it, it stands out. It's hard to explain why, which I, it is frustrating, I know, because like, I want to be able to like say exactly what it is, but it's just a quality mm-hmm. that, she, that she had, so... So yeah, they're so, just having this cute conversation about condoms and just the way yeah. they talk about it because they're so like careful to not say the wrong like, thing and they can't mm-hmm. they so they're talking about they're talking about magnum condoms versus standard condoms, but they cannot say the word penis. Right. Like they mm-hmm. call it the P and they they're really having a hard time even talking about sex, but then they're still having that conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I loved the one girl, um, again, the kind of the more blondish girl. Barnes, I think, and or Paxton. I don't remember who was it. Okay, yeah, wait, let's just look up which one. Yeah, I was gonna say I can't remember which one was which. I think (laughs) but um so I love how she even saying she was then talking about watching a she mispronounced it because she struggled so much to even be able to say the word pornography. She mm-hmm. was like pornography or it, like even yeah. that was so foreign. She couldn't say the word that she mispronounced it slightly. Mm-hmm. And it was so cute. <laughs> so good. Uh, okay. Wait, Paxton is the one that was like a little bit more blonde. Okay. And Barnes. Perfect. So sister is- Paxton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then her whole – because yeah, then she she goes into watching this porn basically and she's this story of like them watching the video and while they're in the video the neighbors you can tell here and she goes through this whole story and the conclusion of this was like that's how she knew god was real heavenly father that's how she knew heavenly father was real heavenly father was real because in that moment i i'm guessing it's when the porn actress had an orgasm but she mentions that she sees the girl's soul like sucked out of her body yeah Yeah. and so she knows that that was you know heavenly father um showing that she was you know living a life of sin or something like that and that's how she (laughs) and i love how her little sister missionary just very like delicately goes do you watch a lot of pornography (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> because here, here's something. And again, like I, I want to make sure that like we are coming from a very respectful place. We know missionaries. We love Utah. Like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. right. Our but, families, a lot of them is Mormon. Yeah, you know, like mm-hmm. in The Handmaid's Tale, when they're going and they're shopping together, they talk about how they have to be so careful because they're like each other's spies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is a very missionary thing. That like you yeah. feel like your partner is kind of keeping tabs because they could yeah. report on you. So you're always very like and well kind yeah, of tiptoeing around. They don't know each other right. before they go on there. Like they do get paired up. Yeah. You don't know the other person. At all. Right. Like that there is that like, oh, you're like you're getting to know them exactly. as you're spending entire days. Oh, with so them. much time together. Like mm-hmm. and yeah. also if if you're not familiar with the LDS church, um the when you go on your mission, it is right out of high school. Mm-hmm. So you are super young. So not only are mm-hmm. you all of a sudden, because family is so big mm-hmm. in that culture, and you spend so much time with your family, and it's such a tight knit community. And then all of a sudden, you're just taken away from them for two years. Your ability to even contact your yeah, family very on missionary is very low. Mm-hmm. And then you're also so young that I just think that would just be such a strange and intense relationship Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah i think they did a good job of capturing that yeah they did so yeah that's kind of our introduction to the girls and when we realize they're in the the place where they're doing their mission so you know Mm -hmm. they've got their like little schedule of who they've got to go visit and you know we kind of start to get the vibe of what's going on yeah (laughs) and one like little part that i loved is the stairs There's, Mm -hmm. like, the giant stairs on, like, the grassy hill. And this wasn't actually in the script. This is when they were doing their, like, location scouting. Um, Someone in, like, their on their team saw it and was like, hey, that's kind of, like, a neat area. Like, maybe we could do something with it. Uh, But I feel like that was just – 
it, it was a good way to show it's like, yeah, just like the the work. Like they have to carry yes. these bikes up and down this hill, like every time. Like I feel like that was such a good addition. Mm-hmm. You no, know? it was. And it really helped us like quickly get introduced to the girls and who they yes. were because we see immediately, you know, that Paxton is like bubbly and a little chattier and a little more like mm-hmm. comfortable and extroverted. And, you know, we see that her sister missionary is a little quieter, a little more mm-hmm. introverted. So like, it's a good way of showing us who they are. Yeah. Cause you also get the sense that, yeah, sister Barnes is also, um, a little bit more worldly or mature. Mm-hmm. is the the vibe that you get from her so yeah. well you also i think it's in that very first scene we see her arm which like yes. maybe not everyone knew but like yeah that was like oh they make it in control yeah they make it th- th- intentional if you know what it is yeah so it's mm-hmm. like if you if you know what that is you know that she's on birth control which mm-hmm. is very rare no no <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, because if you are LDS, you do not have premarital sex. And so why would you need birth control? Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. although I'm curious, how common is is implant birth control? Because I feel like that's not really something I hear much about anymore. I feel like it had its Mm -hmm. its phase where it was popular. And then I feel like it kind of petered out a little. I don't know. Like, Yeah. I don't know anyone who has one. Or like I've known people who had it and then moved to something uh-huh. else. Uh huh. But I don't know if I know anyone who like. Yeah, I don't think one. I do. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking because I just feel like there's been so much uh, changes and and mm-hmm. new technologies and stuff that I don't I don't know. I think it made sense for the movie because it's something that you physically can see right outside mm-hmm. of a person that that you can tell that they're on it. So of course that had to be what they did. But well, I just don't feel like it's very popular. Anymore. And I also thought like it, it's a good option. For someone that is like traveling and can't like constantly be in connection with their doctor. And it's also like she couldn't be taking a daily pill because they would see that. Like right. somebody yeah. would see her taking a pill. So right. it's like mm-hmm. a good incognito yeah. option. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so the girls go to I I don't know if it's gonna supposed to be their last house of the night. But they walk up to this very eerie house as it's starting to rain. Mm-hmm. And they lock up their bicycles. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I, again, I don't even know how to explain the quality, but something about just the, the cinematography of this movie, just the feeling you get, the timing of it was so well done. Just the vibes were so good. And I was like, oh shit, here we go. Yeah, no, you're right. The timing of everything yeah. felt right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is that's a good way to describe it. They had been talking about like how many conversions and baptisms they each had, and Sister Paxson didn't have any. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of at this point raining, and they're waiting on the doorstep, and it's the storm is getting a little more intense, and Sister Barnes is like, let's get you your baptism. Like, they're all yep. cute about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's like, okay, it, this it lets you know that she – she wants this, you know, like it's like she's ready mm-hmm. to convert someone. Yes. Because, again, that's a very big part of the Mormon slash LDS church mm-hmm. is that is growing their numbers, whether that be in life, converting people by being a missionary or after life, having mm-hmm. baptisms for the dead. Like that's that's a thing that they do. They want it. They're right. they're building their numbers. That's part yep. of their church's mm-hmm. mission. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Hugh and Grant. we get Hugh Grant, and we you guys Hugh like I, <laughs> I just love Hugh Grant so much, mm-hmm. <gasps> and he is just so very himself and Hugh Grant in this it's movie. So, it's so good. No, like with, as soon as I saw him in the trailer, I was like, I'm sold, 100. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Hugh Grant's gonna do great. I can, I just know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because he does such a perfect job of being his normal Hugh Grant, incredibly charming and funny. Mm-hmm. But then he puts this this evil undertone to it where it makes it so off-putting, but it's it's just so good. He's the perfect horror movie villain. I yeah. No, I love no, him so much. Because you needed someone, yeah, who was charming and you could like if mm-hmm. he was creepy right off the bat. It wouldn't work. None of this would be believable. 
Right. But like, you have to be a little charming for it all to work yeah. at the beginning. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. even- it's his way of building the the whole base of his tactic is that like, you're the one making the decisions. It's you that's doing this. Yeah. And you, so he has to, he has to be charming and get you hooked first. Mm-hmm. 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 But I do love the the psychology of this one as well is just so good because so okay so they go in the house and they do mention because and this is a thing where you know it, they're two young girls so they cannot be in a house where there is just a man just for mm-hmm. everyone's safety and honestly that's probably a good rule but um so so they mention that but as he as he says oh yeah well my my wife is making a pie. And so they say, oh, yeah, you know, we love pie. It's just so innocent. Mm -hmm. Um, But then even though he's being charming and everything seems normal, he then just casually throws in, oh, you don't mind that the the walls and the ceiling are metal, do you? And it's one of those things where I I feel like especially LDS women are trained to be so kind of accommodating and, you know, gentle and not confrontational necessarily that they're like, oh, sure, that's fine. So it just rolls off. And they never speak of it again until much later in the movie. When that's a weird freaking thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. Laura and I kind of looked at each other. He's so charming when he's, and he says it so quickly. But he's so charming. He's so charming. He says it so quickly that it's kind of like, it's almost like, wait, did I hear him right? Yes, exactly. Yes. That's how I felt when I was watching. I was like, wait, did I hear that right? And, and that, it's like, that's oh, exactly what okay. the girls yeah. do too, where they're just mm-hmm. like, oh, oh, sure. Cause, and, mm-hmm. and then move on because he's just so charming about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love this movie. <laughs> so yeah, they're kind of in this front room and there's a door to the rest of the house. Um it's small. The first thing that I noticed was there were no windows. Yes. Um well there I mean there there were these tiny windows. There they was the one tiny. tiny and then there were these little slats that were, you know, 3 inches wide mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Um so like that's kind of the the scene that we're in. Um and he keeps going back and forth between the back to what we think is probably the kitchen. Yep. You know, because they're baking a pie. And he, that's where his wife is, in quotes. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. And I actually, I feel like one of the reasons I like this movie so much is, yes, there is scary uh, characters and atmosphere and situations that's, you know, just visually very scary. But I feel like the scariest part and the best parts of this movie was the dialogue. Because mm-hmm. I feel like they have Agreed. this really good conversation about religion and what it means and what they believe and what is the Book of Mormon. And I actually just felt like it, the dialogue was so good that they had. And they talk for so much. Like, again, it's like it, there's three actors, really. There, yeah. You know, we have a couple, we have like a couple side mm-hmm. characters, but like it's three people mm-hmm. in a house. And like that's it. That's it. Yeah. We only hear from these three people, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it happens pretty much in like real time. Like there's no gap. No, there's not in time. Like we're just kind of watching it. Like we get thrown into a moment, and we're just get, we're just going to see the entire moment play mm-hmm. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's an awful moment, but honestly, it was so funny. So when they're having this conversation. He, so they, you know, they ask him questions about, you know, what do you believe in? And you're open to, you know, learning more about our religion. And then he asks them some questions Mm -hmm. about themselves. And I forget exactly how this comes about, but he, he asks about their family and sister Barnes mentions that her dad has died and she is it that he like he like asks her you know like what happened yeah he was like you don't have to say but could you tell me what what happened and like keep in mind that like they had been talking about the wife baking a blueberry pie this whole time Mm -hmm. so she she's like she's like oh you know yeah he he had Lou Gehrig's disease and he's like oh blueberry disease um and then he's like and he starts laughing because he's like, like you know oh you said blueberry disease like it's funny yeah and then oh, you, the pie you know sister Paxton is like no Lou Gehrig's disease and he's like oh I'm terribly oh. sorry wow that was <laughs> I thought you were making a joke about blueberry disease it's so awful but it was so it was actually kind of funny <laughs> no it was 
because he apparently has that was this- um inspired by something that did happen in real life to one of the writers. Oh. It's literally that yeah. is someone said Lou Gehrig's and someone thought they said blueberries <laughs> disease. <laughs> so that's amazing oh like it's God. too funny it from like life. like do you feel like that inspired this whole movie like I somebody so. mishearing yes. lou gehrig's disease for blueberry disease and they're like you yes. know what that's it that's it we have our movie premise <laughs> let's go the blueberry and the 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 relationship with her dad and like kind of how that like informed who she is that was a huge part of the movie yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it worked so well well oh. and i guess i i I remember, I think, seeing someone ask, like, why blueberry? And they're like, it just felt weird. Like, who makes blueberry pie? Right. You know? Mm-hmm. And and I, I feel like it's like, yeah, like, you just, that, that's not, like, one of the top ones you think yeah. of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think this is a good time <laughs> to take pause and talk about what we're sipping on. Yes. Mm-hmm. You guys, we're very excited about this one. Because what what happens is he goes, at this point, they're kind of like, okay, can we meet your wife? Like, we really... It all we need to know that she's here. So and could you bring her like out? The third or fourth time, right? Like. So finally, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he goes and he comes back in with a tray, and he's got a candle and a couple of cokes. Mm-hmm. You know, and he sets the cokes in front of them. Um, and then you know, after a while, he's like, oh, that's right. Like you can't have caffeine. And they kind of are like, well, no, that's not it. We're just not thirsty. Like, don't worry mm-hmm. about it. Like, so again. Now, especially that Hulu did that Mormon wife show, the secret yes. Mormon wife, you you have to know by now that if you're in Utah, it's about soda. It's so yeah. about soda. Because LDS have this weird thing where they can't have hot caffeine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they can't have tea, caffeinated tea, and they can't have coffee. Mm-hmm. But they can have cold caffeine. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. And so Utah is big on soda shops. They're just like coffee shops, but they're soda. Yeah. It's Swig like, is a big one. Yeah. So delicious. It's like if craft cocktails were just, it, it's like, it's actually kind of like mocktails, but it's all the soda. It's just. Yes. Yeah. It's just, I was about to yeah, say ungodly so, amounts of sugar. <laughs> no, it is ungodly. Oh no, amounts. but it's a lot. I mean, guys, it's soda, and then it's you just add more sugar flavors, flavors to mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but they are all over. You you can't drive very far without driving past a swig or no. some other sort of soda shop. So it's funny because living in living in other places like Oregon and New York, I feel like normally you can't really drive a couple of blocks without seeing some sort of a coffee shop, right? Like a but Starbucks, it's actually, Dutch Bros. Yes, it's yeah. so, sometimes it's so hard to find. Like, I just want to grab a coffee on my way to work and I have to like plan my route because they're not everywhere. No, they're not. They're really mm-hmm. not everywhere. Here in Utah, but right? They're if not. I ever wanted to just get a soda, mm-hmm. I'd wait Oh, work. man. Absolutely. No problem. So many mm-hmm. options. <laughs> so we did a little research because actually none of us really – drink soda like that never been to a swig okay so my husband loves swig he's like a big swig fan Mm -hmm. um and so we looked there but they didn't have quite what we were looking for so we went to so delicious and they have because you like build your own things they have some pre-made ones but like Mm -hmm. you say okay i want a diet coke and then you've got a hundred syrups and creams that you can add so we got a blueberry diet coke and we brought it home and we're putting a little rum in it. Nice. A little German Coke. Heretic yes. it up. <laughs> and but we're drinking that while we eat blueberry pie and burn our blueberry candle. We had to go all in for this one, you guys. Full blueberry pie. I love <laughs> the it. The entire pie experience. Yeah, I love it. So if you don't have a soda shop, you can just, I don't know, go get a Diet Coke. Yes. And then maybe find like a blueberry liquor, like a like I don't know if like blueberry vodka. Oh, I so I'm I bet sure you that exists. find a way to make your own. Yeah, blueberry well, soda, just, like a blueberry a, a blueberry tarani syrup or something, and yeah. then add liquor or something. Mm-hmm. Could yep. be good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but okay. I feel like the flavors will work because I, you know, I, I've told you, ladies, but I haven't talked about on the podcast. My first job was at a Dunkin' Donuts, and. One of our most popular flavors was blueberry. Like people want just black coffee with blueberry syrup 
maybe some like cream or sugar, but like that was like one of the most common yes. things people mm-hmm. asked for. No, mm-hmm. people love it. So blueberry and coffee. Yeah, blueberry and soda. It it, it works, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm into so it. I was reading this article that was talking about how movie theaters are like, because I feel like for a minute there, movie theaters were not very popular. People kind of stopped going, but I feel like they're making oh, yeah. a comeback. Mm-hmm. And I guess some theaters are trying to do like more interactive experiences. And there's one that did where they have scent experience and they like waft in scents while you're watching the movie that have to do with the scene. So like if it was this movie, for instance, while he like is burning the candle, they would have been like wafting in the scent of blueberry. Hmm. And I'm like, like, that is amazing. Like it's wild. That would make me hungry. And a real slippery (laughs) slope. Cause like, yeah. You know, like in Harry Potter where some of the like, you know, jelly beans are disgusting. I feel like Mm -hmm. they could do that with this. Like, Mm -hmm. okay. Am I like making this up? Like didn't, one of the Spy Kids movies do that. Oh we're like, gosh. if you went to the theater, yes. you would they you could do like a scent thing. I think oh. I think they did. Yes. Oh, oh my god, Spy Kids four use scratch and sniff cards. So it was like Amazing. while you watched the movie, you would then like scratch to sniff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they were ahead of their time, you guys. Spy Kids is an amazing movie. I love so, it. Spy Kids did it first. Good I job, just remember like I'm remembering like in um like Disney World or I think I think I'm remembering it from Disney World, where you'd go on some of the rides and you'd be watching, you know, a little clip of a movie, and then, um, you know, the seats kind of move or shake, and yeah. then oh, um, yeah. something happens where like they they fall into water, and actual water squirts on your face mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of fun. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the splash zone from yeah. our Saw it's musical. All the musical. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Good times. Okay, so yeah, at this point, they're getting a little antsy um, well, because, you know, the wife isn't coming out. And this is when when I just wrote down. So first of all, there's just the, the tension after he's mm-hmm. like insulting her dad because of the blueberry disease. And then the yeah. lights go out. Yes, because they're I on a timer. I don't mm-hmm. know if someone said this or it was just my own thought that happened. But then I wrote, time for enlightenment. <laughs> don't know Did where that say, came from but he may have said that at some point i think he might have i think oh, he said that he at did. some point oh yeah because then he's then he goes i have to he's like i have to ask an awkward kind of an icky question oh, but he yeah. says it in his like charming Hugh but Grant the build way. up you're like getting really angsty of mm-hmm. what he's gonna ask because you're like okay just and she's finally like okay well we won't know until you say until it so just ask, ask it, yeah. like yeah mm-hmm. and then he's asking about you know what are their thoughts on polygamy? Because, mm-hmm. you know, no matter your your affiliation with the church, a lot of people who, especially people who aren't really in the LDS church, when they hear Mormonism, that's what they think of. Yeah, you think of that. Because mm-hmm. that they have a history of that. Right. They just do. Mm-hmm. Um, but and he has this way of balancing listening to them. Mm-hmm. And and really hearing it and then kind of responding in a way that at first is like validating of what they say, but then he just comes in and like has this quick change where mm-hmm. he says his opinion, which is very different and very like critical, and he just mm-hmm. delivers it so quickly and sharply. Like it's yeah. such a unique dialogue that they have that you're just mm-hmm. constantly kind of like on your toes and and tense because you're not sure where it's gonna go Mm -hmm. yeah it's like a verbal cat and mouse Mm -hmm. yeah totally more than a physical cat and mouse yeah yeah because it's like he asks this question and it's like oh okay this okay you're asking about polygamy that's this is awkward but it's like no he wasn't asking about it to ask about like oh having multiple wives it was like he asked about it because they don't do it anymore you know so like that's how like what leads him to his next kind of like well you know how do you feel about the fact that things just change, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Like, he was kind of saying, you know, how how is it okay that just all of a sudden, you know, you practiced it for for all of this time, and then all of a sudden there was just this revelation that banishes it. Like, how yeah. do you justify that, that all of a sudden just God just changes his mind? Um, 
And I actually really liked the the girl's explanation. I feel like they did a good job in this movie of of yes, they're young and they're kind of innocent and a bit naive, but they're they're intelligent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're intelligent and they have reasons for why they believe what they believe. So I I liked their responses. Oh, well, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna share uh, an experience that I had. We leave the theater and you know we're walking out. And there was a group that had seen it that were in there with us. And it was like their parents and then some like teen and 20 year old guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that they're talking about is how like, oh, well, the dumb one did X, Y, and Z. And I was like, oh, that's so sad. Cause I think they're saying, cause it, it, you do, the scene is set so that you feel that Barnes is more worldly, is more educated, and mm-hmm. is more comfortable um, contradicting him and disagreeing mm-hmm. with him. But that doesn't mean that she was dumb. Like, yeah. she was well, just a little more naive. Well, and it's like, did you watch the whole movie? I, yes. I say, like, <laughs> while doing research, I, I, like, I feel like that was, like, a, a criticism that I found that, honestly, it kind of felt like this, it was coming from people who didn't actually watch the movie. Yeah. Who were like, oh, like... You're portraying these like young, like women missionaries as like all being like naive and yeah, and dumb and stuff. It's like no, they're no, not. Did you watch no. it? Their whole like movies, them holding their ground and yeah. yeah, coming back at him in like different ways and mm-hmm. yeah, so that staying was firm on their beliefs. Like it, mm-hmm. I I thought it was actually like a really nice portrayal of that. No, I agree. <laughs> I think they they are portrayed as sheltered. And limited in their experience because that's that's pretty fair and true, but that does not make them right dumb dumb or unworthy or anything. Yes, they've had a limited experience, but the the experience they have is still valid. Yeah. Well, and if you watch the movie, like it unfolds in a way where like they handle their fucking self. Like, yeah. 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 If that's how you come, if that's what your thoughts after watching this movie, then we didn't watch the same movie. No, exactly. (laughs) No, totally. Totally. And then oh. he just, he's so knowledgeable about LDS history. And no, and just because of our experience, or mm-hmm. I guess my experience, I actually feel like a lot of it was pretty accurate. Yeah, like, pretty accurate. It, yeah, yeah. It, it seemed pretty legit of kind of some of the history of mm-hmm. the church. Yeah. I mean, if you live in Utah, like again, even if you're not Mormon, you mm-hmm. will learn all of this stuff. No, you just well, it's it's unavoidable. It's against your will. Like, it's gonna yeah, happen. Okay. No, it's you just you learn you about it. avoid it. Like <laughs> Okay, so I also love <laughs> that there's like some really funny moments in this movie. We already talked about one with the blueberry disease. And then the other one, I love at some point he I think again, he's trying to like question the church leaders and you know mm-hmm. how, their teachings, and so he gives the quote of you know with or somebody gives the quote of with great power comes great responsibility. To which then Sister Paxton is like, "Oh, Spider Man," and then he goes, "No, Voltaire." Voltaire, <laughs> which was just like, <laughs> "Oh, I love that so much." That's that was so my funny. favorite because <laughs> Spider Man does say that, so yeah, she's not he wrong. does. Spider Man does say it. <laughs> It's just context. It's like sometimes when we talk about things and like that because you're a little bit younger, I feel like you have a different place it comes from for you right. versus me because I'm older. <laughs> oh, I love it. I also loved the quote that comes up pretty soon after this where they – he's like – he starts bringing up different um, fast food places. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And he's like giving them a hierarchy. And at some point they bring up Taco Bell. And they're very, at this point, they get very serious. Sister Barnes is like, we don't talk about Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. And she's serious. She yeah. means it. And he's like, well, why don't you talk about Taco Bell? And, like, and Paxton's like, well, in order to tell you why we don't talk about Taco Bell, we'd have to talk about Taco mm-hmm. Bell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I don't know how you guys all feel about the rankings of the fast foods that they did. Mm. but. Mm. I don't eat I don't eat a ton of fast food, but if I ever am craving it, it's totally Taco Bell. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I mm-hmm. I absolutely yeah. <laughs> I love Taco Bell. <laughs> I love Taco Bell. When you're craving it, it's the only thing that hits the spot. I I, I think everything at Taco Bell tastes the same. It's all just yes. the same flavor and slightly so the same different thing. forms. Yes. But when you're craving it, 
Mm-hmm. It hits just right. 100%. I think I well, disagreed with all their rankings. Like, I yeah. don't think yeah. Carl's Jr. is anywhere near the top of my list. No. Mm-mm. Yeah. Agreed. Um, I, yeah, no, it was, yeah. I, I disagree. Mm-hmm. Agree. <laughs> well, because I also feel like, I don't know, as I, I, as someone who doesn't always want to eat meat, Taco Bell is one of the only places that's like good fast food and you don't have to eat meat. Mm-hmm. Right. With it. So yeah. that's why I like mm-hmm. the Taco Bell. <laughs> So yeah, things are getting tenser. At this point, he's telling a story and he blows the candle out. And I think that's when he says, time for enlightenment. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the the candle is not facing him. Um, and at this point, the girls are like, okay, I think we're we're getting ready to wrap this up. Like, we'd like to say hi to your wife. And then, you know, we have to head back. Like, It's very so more he- firm yes Can you go get your wife <laughs> right yeah so he goes back in the back room and it, it's a few minutes you know and they're hearing like things and they're like okay what's going on mm-hmm. and sister barnes gets the candle and turns it so slowly towards oh. them and we just see the label and it's a blueberry pie candle <laughs> it's such a and okay this is it's like, so I, I will say this literally all the time. So and it's not even worth repeating, but I hate trailers. I'm so happy I did not rewatch the trailer before mm-hmm. watching this movie because I like watching them before we record just to be yes. like, what kind of movie did they advertise versus what we saw? Mm-hmm. And this was in the trailer. Oh, really? We're turning the candle and then they revealed blueberry pie as the scent. That would have ruin no, that the tension I for the entire be- i could have completely forgotten about that mm-hmm. or maybe i watched a different trailer um to do it but like your view of that whole beginning thing would be completely thrown off i agree mm-hmm. i 100 mm-hmm. percent agree yeah 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 so yeah the moment this happens they're like okay there's there's not a wife well and so right before, like, so right after he's comparing the religion to fast food and before he leaves and they turn the candle, he says, well, I have found the one true religion. Because he's comparing, like, the hierarchy of fast food and the hierarchy of religion. And mm-hmm. he said, well, I have found the one true religion. That's when they're like, go get your wife. We got to go. Yeah. Yeah. And then that scene of them turning the mm-hmm. candle. So at this point, they're already like, okay, he's just, he's crossing a line now mm-hmm. of being very, very mm-hmm. creepy. Mm-hmm. And then they realize there's no. And they're really like debating, like, what do we do? Like, mm-hmm. so they're, you know, they get up and they're like, we're, we're just going to go. Like, we got to, they're like, what are we going to do? So the one girl pull, pulls her phone out. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, we're going to call. They take the little phone call um, mm-hmm. and he goes into the kitchen. And they are talking amongst each other mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, like we don't have it. Oh, and they're right. like, maybe we should just go. Like, yes. let's just, yeah. like it's they're two like, miles. We'll walk. It's not great. It's fine. Like maybe let's just walk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they make the decision to leave without yes. the coat. They're like, we'll just figure it out. Mm-hmm. And but that's when the they door. learn. And they it's can't locked. leave. Because yeah. it's weird enough that the lights are on a timer. Mm-hmm. But I will say we lived in a house with that. I was mm-hmm. thinking about that. When so like, this. I was actually kind of like, oh, well, actually that's not like, yeah, like you see it in old house. It's unheard, but when we lived in this house in New Hampshire, it was a giant house. Some of the rooms had a type, like the dining room and things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, but they, they noticed that the door is locked and there's no way to unlock it. Yeah. Like they're, they're trying to figure out how the door works. Because no, like, they like, don't even see like a bolt. keyhole. They're like, I don't understand mm-hmm. how to open this door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they so kind it's... of are panicking because like, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. And that's when they, yeah, that's when we really see there's no windows. Right. Mm-hmm. There's no way out. Because she even well, asks the... if they could fit out of the one. Uh-huh. And there's no way. Yeah. Like it's the no. tiny window. Like, yeah. Like, like the fit tiny. through. <laughs> yeah. Right. So they realize they're going to have to go and get their – or get him to help them get out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they – I I love what they have to – he's just kind of disappeared into the back at this point. Mm-hmm. And so they have to go into this dark hall. And there's this really creepy statue where at first you think it's a person or like somebody yes. watching them. Because I think they they thought it was him at <laughs> yeah, first. Yeah, they're like, Mr. Reed? They're like, yeah, they're like, Mr. Reed? And it's just, and it's so just like a 
biblical guy. I don't know yeah. who it was. Yeah, actually, I have no idea who it was. Mm-hmm. It was like a saint, like a saintly yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. thing. And I just love that because it's one of those things where, yeah, when you're freaked out, there it, it's pouring down rain. It's super dark. They're with this creepy guy. They have to go in this hall. And then you see the statue. It's one of those things where it just plays with your mind where, yeah, that freaks you out. Like, mm-hmm. it's scary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then they they get – they you hear this old-timey music. Mm-hmm. And they go into this really odd shaped room. Mm-hmm. Like we need it's to talk weird. about this room. Like yeah. the the back side on the side has like rows of books, like bookcases. Like yeah, yeah, like a library. There's an obvious altar. Yeah, no, it's like a library pews. chapel kind of thing. And when I swear, when we first see the room, they do they use like a weird like lens, like a wider kind of yes. angle lens. So like. It feels disorienting mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when you first see the room. Like even just like the way that all the stuff on the wall is like at angles, mm-hmm. like it it feels off. Yeah. The room is off. Mm-hmm. It's almost like we see it in their fearful eyes. Yeah. Like how they would have seen it when they were scared. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's how we see it, which is so cool. Yeah. No, that – yeah, where you're kind of like – because it is almost like a scanning when mm-hmm. you first get in of that, like, yeah, scanning all the different elements. Yeah. And then at the back, there's two doors. There's a purple door and a green door. They're they're kind of separated. They're not right next to each other, but they're mm-hmm. on the same wall. Um, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I did not notice they were different colors. Oh, wait. I didn't either. Weren't they? I don't know. I They, they may have been. I Wouldn't that be remember. so crazy if they weren't? <laughs> Wouldn't that be so crazy? I did not notice. I just wait, noticed there was two doors. Different. I mean, later we distinguish between them because you write stuff on them. Yeah. But so I just love where they kind of explain to him and they say, you know, oh, we're, we need to go. Uh, mm-hmm. We think we need your help. There's something wrong with your, with your front door. It won't open or like. Oh yeah. They're different open. colors. Sorry. They are. Yeah. They're, they're different colors. Okay. Oh like yeah. No, they like are. Very muted, but it's like a very like muted purple and muted green. Oh, interesting, because I wonder if it came something. Mm. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But so we then get this man who has had, like, these moments of a little bit of creepy things, he says. Like, a little – there. well, not a little. There's so much tension that has been built. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, he's so still charming and charismatic. And when they explain, you know, oh, I think we need your help. I think something's wrong with your lock. And he says, the front door won't open again. And they're like, what? He's just so stern about it. It will not. It's like, it won't, it, it open, won't open until the morning. Mm-hmm. And then he's very insistent on like, I'm not keeping you here. You can leave anytime you want. Like, you, yeah. oh, do you want to go? Okay. Like, you can go. Mm-hmm. Like, I think at this point, he even gives them their coats back in the mm-hmm. next few minutes. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, and they realize yeah, that the bike go. he was put in the different coat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the one girl had it. And then when they get their coats back, it's switched. But he's very much like, no, you can leave. Like, yeah. Don't don't let me like, stop you. I'm not keeping you here. But the front door won't open. Right. But yeah. So they're kind of like, it's on a could timer. you show us how yeah. to leave then? Because he's like, well, you'll have to go out the back. And and they're like, well, can you take us out, yeah. out there? Can you go with us? Like, yeah. You know. When this point, I think this is the last time they ask. They're like, "Can you get your wife? We really mm-hmm. just need to meet her, and just like you know." Right now. And I think at this point, he's like, "Do you still believe? Right, I have a wife." Yeah, I, I think, yeah, because I, I, I kind of, oh yeah, he does. He mm-hmm. does say, he does say, you know, do you still believe that my wife is in the next room? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because because he also at this point is challenging them, and he's saying. You know, you don't, you, you two don't have to lie. You don't make up, you don't have to make up a story that someone called you Mm -hmm. because I know no one called you because remember when I asked you if you had a problem with the metal walls and ceiling there, you will not get a phone call in here or make one. There's no service. Um, and it's just, it's so just impending doom. And then like. Before they go through the doors, the game, the board game comes out. Oh my gosh, yes. The whole Monopoly. So he brings out Monopoly. Um, yeah. And you can just tell that they're like, because that was almost, they asked if they could leave and he like 
presents monopoly and they're like how is that gonna help us leave like what well because i think he's like oh yeah you just have to go out through the back and they see the two doors right and it's like what which one and Mm -hmm. he's like you tell me like he kind of goes into like the importance of like i don't know which Mm -hmm. one do you think Mm -hmm. you should go through and i I think that's kind of what leads into his like board game yeah like we're Mm -hmm. still talking religion here yeah well because and yeah he's he's um he had also still, when he was talking to them about, you know, do you do you believe that my wife is around? I I loved the line he said where he said something about, are you going to believe what you know isn't true? Because he knows at this point they know there's no wife. Yeah. Right. And he goes, are you going to believe what you know it isn't true just to feel comfort? And then, like, he's totally setting up because he's clearly then going to compare that mm-hmm. to their belief in religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm just like, oh, it's behind the door. Yeah. But yeah, he he gets out the Monopoly games and it's got to be, it, I didn't, I haven't looked this up, but it's got to be true, right? Like Monopoly yeah, it is, is. knockoff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That of is this, true. Of like la- the, the landlord's game. Mm-hmm. The landlord's think, game. Yeah. Yeah. That a woman invented long mm-hmm. before Monopoly. Um, so he's basically saying like Judaism is the landlord's game because it's, right. the, OG. it's the OG. Mm-hmm. And then, um, Christianity is monopoly. Mm-hmm. Islam mm-hmm. is forget what he said that one was. Like another monopoly knockoff, like a even more like modernized, cheaper monopoly. Yeah. And then, and then the Mormon is, one is Bob Ross monopoly. <laughs> is, the, is the even more <laughs> like diluted <laughs> Bob version. Ross monopoly version. <laughs> Uh, and then, okay, so then I love, he's, it, so he doesn't just do one sort of metaphor comparison. It's like a ton yeah. of them. Because mm-hmm. he's playing the song, The Air That You Breathe. Yeah. But then he's talking about how that's the OG. And then that the knockoff version of that is the the creep song. And yeah. then the knockoff version of that is one by Lana Del Rey. And he's mm-hmm. so he's talking about all these iterations of things and how it's just diluting the message and obscuring the original. Mm-hmm. Oh. And his whole like presentation that, that he he then goes into, where it's like this man set up a light show, you know, because then he's just going through it. He's like, oh, and then it's like not even this. It's like, here's all of these stories in different times that, you know, clearly influence the Bible. You know, where it's like, here's like this, I, I'm forgetting all the examples now, mm-hmm. but it was like, you know, all these stories that you I feel like are like famous Christianity stories. Yeah. And he like, but I just, I love that. It's like, you know, he like points and then like the little light, the, like the frame will like light up. It's like, here's this example. Like, here's this example. <laughs> like, it's like yeah. he prepared a whole show. It's like a gallery. Like, yeah. Like yeah. his whole gallery. Mm-hmm. And I forget if it's here or maybe it might've been a little bit earlier. I love when, um. Sister Paxton is just like, you know, we're not we're not trying to be silly, but we just want to go. Like, yeah, just her little, so. like, innocent little way of speaking <laughs> as he's just being a total freaking creep. <laughs> One of my favorite moments um, before we finish with this section is he, he goes on this whole Monopoly monologue. And then he starts talking about, like, you know, what little like character everyone chooses to be and he was like you know which one i pick like i won't tell you and then he meows yeah meow <laughs> it was good <laughs> but there's there's no cat in monopoly right no there's no Is cat there not? okay they added the cat yeah more than 11 years ago I don't okay know. that's at least yeah. how old this article is yeah See, but that's historically inaccurate for them to say that he always chooses the cat because that's been fairly new. Well, I mean, if you over the last decade, always yeah, I think the you cat, can count it a decade. If you've been doing but something for a decade, but he's been can... studying religion for much longer than that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't care. I'm happy he meowed. Me I'm too. happy he meowed too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> meow. Meow. <laughs> I also think he did. I, I don't think that was in the script. I think he separately meowed. I, I hope so. Isn't I feel like that would be a thing wheel? he would do. A spinning wheel? Isn't there also a spinning wheel as a character? All right, we can stop talking about characters. Right, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'll, you know, 
a lot happens but then yeah. eventually it's to the point where he's like okay why don't you just why don't you go yeah you know and he and, does he writes mm -hmm. belief and disbelief and disbelief on the door and at this point sister barnes is like oh he's just studying us like mm -hmm. you have set it up mm -hmm. so that we will do x y and z you want to see how we respond you know, mm -hmm. and she kind of pokes holes even in like his Judaism and Islam you yes. know, comparisons. She's like, you didn't account for this or this. Like you're you're not you're not trying to show us up on theology. You're you're trying to study our reactions to it. Mm -hmm. Like and so she's like, I'm gonna go through the belief door because Sister Paxton is like, Well, no, obviously then he wants us to go through disbelief. So we're gonna go yeah. through disbelief. So there's a moment where they're like disagreeing. Yeah. But, but finally I, I, mean, I kind of appreciate because like to me it wasn't that wasn't Paxton being like, Oh, I'm naive and gonna No, go that was on. her that saying was, this is what he wants us. Yeah. That was her being like, I would like to survive right. in this mm -hmm. situation. Um, we're gonna listen to what this kind, mm -hmm. smart man is telling us. And yes. clearly we disbelieve now. <laughs> because <laughs> like, we should say before this all went down, um, Sister Barnes did look through the doors. So she opened the, the door mm -hmm. and we didn't see what she saw, but she saw mm -hmm. something scary. Mm -hmm. And then the yeah. same thing through the other. And he mentions like, well, you saw the outside of my house. Like, you know, I'm on a cliff. Yeah. So we're kind of like, what is behind this? So we already know there's something bad going on. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then finally they open the belief door and we see it's just like a descending staircase into the darkness. Yeah. And, so they and the start only light was from the room, but he <laughs> closes the door behind them. Right. And That's so they're just in this like pitch black, yeah, stairway. That's when I wrote, "Okay, bye." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, it's just okay, done. Bye. <laughs> yep. But they have their little phone, so they pull out the flashlight on their phone, mm -hmm. and they go down. Yep. And we see there's no exit nope. after those stairs. It is not just yeah. they're out. Um, but then I, but then. The next notable thing I have is that, so they're trying to like find exits and they can't find anything. Mm -hmm. But then there's just this slow opening of the door again. And then we meet. This is what I thought. I was like, oh, he is married. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I was like, oh, we met. This is that's his wife. His wife. So I wrote, oh, I, wrote I didn't even shrouded think shrouded wife because it's <laughs> that's what I thought too. Yes, it's a shrouded woman. She comes out. She's a little hobbly. She's a little yep. freaky looking, but she's carrying a blueberry pie. No, you're mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. I fully expected him to be like, meet my wife. Meet the missus. Yes. I, yeah, no, I, I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> so he's explaining to them. So he's got like this mechanism where he can talk upstairs and they hear it through this pipe downstairs yeah, like pretty loud mm -hmm. type thing mm -hmm. and that gave me a jump scare because as he's talking they're kind of like trying to still investigate how to get out and this big spider comes out from the, the spout <laughs> yes the oh. spider got me too i think i screamed at that point yeah. <laughs> um and and we get we've realized he can see them like there must be yeah. video surveillance like he can see what they're doing yes yeah mm-hmm so yeah, he explains that this um this woman is a living prophet mm -hmm. and she's gonna help show them, you know, I'm I'm thinking the one true religion at this point mm -hmm. is what he's gonna show them. And so he's saying, uh, this blueberry pie has been laced with arsenic and something and right. It was like a berry, like a poison. Yeah, wait, berry. what was it? Yeah. The wolf Spain? Am I making that? Wolf Spain, yeah, maybe? No, there's yeah. like yeah, there's yeah. like a very common. And... Mm -hmm. yeah. It was poison. It was poison. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there's poison in this pie, and she's gonna eat it, and she's gonna die, and yeah. you're gonna see her die, and then you two are gonna witness, and be able to testify about she gets reborn. She's mm -hmm. gonna die and come back to life. Yeah, and I think it's at this point then that um, they're elder somebody a, a a male in the church elder somebody yeah. he realizes that because they always have to check in at 5 p.m when they come home 
mm-hmm. from their daily activities. Yeah, or maybe have, it was like cleaning. It, it was, was like a chore chart. Log. Yeah, and like she had always chart. done hers, but that night she hadn't. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he was like, oh, that's weird. He's like, something's yeah. up. So he goes looking and um, so he's at the door mm-hmm. because he knows that they were expected to go to this man's house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's and the, the when the doorbell rings, like it's an alarm sounding. Yeah, for the whole like, room. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he goes to the door and he's like, no, I haven't seen him. Sorry. Do you need help? Can I, like, I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't seen them, but I can help you if you need. Like, he's very friendly. And the guy's like, no, it's okay. Like, thanks. Mm-hmm. So he leaves. And I just, again, while this is happening, I love the the, the tension and I love the detail of, so the girls up, if you go back up the stairs, the door to the, you know, the library where they had just been. and the gap between the floor and the door is so big that you see their eyes yes peeking through the door like mm-hmm. listening trying and screaming trying to get the attention of the elder mm-hmm. but he can't hear him yeah after they try to scream it doesn't work they come back mm-hmm. down and they try to get the matches but they yeah they see matches, matches. So slowly pulling yeah they're pulling the, the rug, rug. Mm-hmm. But then the guy comes back, the elder, like the door rings again. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't remember why he said he came back. <laughs> to give him a pamphlet. Oh, that's right. The little thing, the little pamphlet. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I left before I gave you the this pamphlet, pamphlet on right, yeah. you know, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yep. yep. So he comes back to give him the pamphlet. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I feel like, so when he leaves, do we realize that the bikes aren't there? Yes. Because that, like, that's when we know, right? You should have seen them. They, yeah. Because at first you're thinking, oh, he came back because he saw their bikes. Yes. That's what I thought. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought too. And I was like, or if he didn't see them as he walks out, mm-hmm. he's going to notice them. Mm-hmm. But no, the bikes are not there. So. Yeah. Bikes have been moved. Yeah. And then um, because the girls had been distracted trying to get the matches, and like uh, get the attention of the elder, because um, one of the things they want to do with the matches is light a fire so that the smoke he'll see. Yeah, uh, but it, um, you know, doesn't end up working out very well. But they come back, they get some, they get some matches, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then they come back down the stairs and they realize the prophet who had, because they had confirmed we should we should oh, go yes. back. He made them confirm. Yes. He made them confirm that after she, she ate this dead. pie, she died. Like mm-hmm. she face down in the pie, like, dead. Yep. It, no breath, no pulse. She was dead. Mm-hmm. And it's Sister Paxton that's like, wait, she moved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Her head was face down and now it's to the mm-hmm. side. Yeah. And I think the, the other sister's like, I don't, I don't, it's fine. I don't know. Like she's, yeah. you know, not she's as like, concerned. No, she didn't move. Yeah. But like, Sister Paxton's fine. like, no, she moved. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah, they're trying to light the fire. Yeah. Another scary he- moment. Scary moment of him, her. Oh. Well, the prophet. the prophet. Oh, right. They're trying to light the matches, and all of a sudden, she is behind them, and she's like puking blood. Yeah, Paxton looks over because you get the table in the background, and then uh-huh. you realize there's no one at the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the prophet yeah. is right behind her, right behind them. Blood. Yeah. yeah, and then she tells them the what she saw. Yeah, like, because he says they're, she'll confirm what she saw on the other side. So she's, yeah. like, rambling about. Like, clouds and lights. Right. And and the, she also says it's not real or don't. Yeah, really she ends it at with. At the end, she says it's not real. It's not real is what she says at the end. And it's, it feels different than the rest of her prophecy. Mm-hmm. Like, it's mm-hmm. separate from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then at this point. Mr. Reed comes back. Yeah, because he like, like grabs a match and lights it. Because she- yeah, the you know Barnes isn't able to get it lit very well. Mm-hmm. Like, and he just comes and strikes it, and he's back in the room. And he's like, has his little notepad. Or it's mm-hmm. like, yeah. So what did you see? What yeah, you what see? happened? And he, oh, and he, the the prophet, he like takes her arm and like takes her out, and we mm-hmm. see through like a little side door. Yeah, not the two doors. There's like a side, right. like door a that she door. goes through. And he's like, all right, well, yeah, what'd you see? Let's talk about these miracles that you just saw. 
And then I liked the line that he says at one point where he says, I can show you God if you're willing to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like basically saying you can do what just happened with her Mm -hmm. and you can see God, but you have to be willing to die. And that's Mm -hmm. when Barnes is like, oh my God, he, he's like, she doesn't say getting off, but he's like, his plan is that we choose to die. We have to choose our death. She said she was like, I I was waiting for you. For you to to say. Like, to make it seem like it how it was like something like i was waiting to see how you would make it our idea to die yes yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and like how i think she she kind of talks about how it's not this is not a miracle this is a magic trick mm-hmm. yeah and then we learn about what happened at taco bell yeah she's she's seen she she's had her own near death mm-hmm. experience. Mm-hmm. And she said she saw like the same thing, right? The light. Yep. The Yeah, so so pretty much Taco Bell like gave her like, like E. coli poisoning, poisoning or something. something. Right. Yeah. When she was about 4 and so she died, but like they brought her back to life and I just love that they mm-hmm. like make make it that it was Taco Bell that right. she died <laughs> from when she was young. <laughs> um and that she also saw like how when you die, you know, just because of the the science of your brain, yeah, you're going to see white lights. You're going to have these hallucinations. Mm-hmm. Um, but it it doesn't mean necessarily that you actually died. It's, it's just what your brain does right. to you. Yeah. And then I it, somebody mentioned something about how memories are also iterations. And I forget who said that. Oh, I but I just understand. felt like it was really notable because it she was talking. Somebody was talking about how memories, when you have a memory, you're actually not remembering the thing that happened. You're oh, he says that. He mm-hmm. says that. Yes. Okay. You're remembering mm-hmm. the last time. You remembered it. You remembered yeah. that. Right. Because that's what he was saying about her experience. Yes. Yeah. Right. But then, then he, he gets her. He, but, oh, it was such a good moment though, because they had prepared this like, okay, the the code word. Is gonna be magic underwear. Yeah, because she has a she has a like like a letter opener. Yeah, like a letter opener. Mm-hmm. And she was like, because it was Barnes who got it, and she was like, he's watching me too closely, so mm-hmm. it has to be you. He won't expect it if it's you. Yep. So she told she told Paxton, when I say the magic word mm-hmm. of magic underwear, you're gonna stab him in yep. the throat. Yep. And like that's it. That's what we're gonna get out of this. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and so, she so says, she, we she hear it. it. We see a throat. Right. Slit. And it's like, oh, okay. And then we see blood go on two hands mm-hmm. from from the throat. Mm-hmm. But, but it, it wasn't was Mr. Reed. It was Barnes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. He he was on to them. He knew it was coming. And he now, had his own plan. The one thing that I don't understand is the birth control thing like this to me was such a weird scene that i was like Mm -hmm. this doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever yeah why this is in this movie Mm -hmm. so i'm curious like what your take on it because it like took me out of it for a minute where i was like i that doesn't make any sense yeah i for for me i was kind of thinking that he was trying to just throw another form of of belief or disbelief at Paxton. Mm-hmm. So he so he essentially is saying we are in a simulation and the I I know that Barnes was an AI or something. Like she wasn't right, real. Yeah. She's not That's real. How mm-hmm. she reacted to the flame. And um so he's like digging in also through her arm oh. to pull out what he says is like a the program chip or something right yeah but it's like the scene where he's pulling out he like starts pulling something out and like, oh nope that's a vein <laughs> he like goes oh, it was back so gross. into di- oh <laughs> so here's here's what i think i think that he has done so much research and realizes that likely paxton is very because she's a you know super super mormon very kind of sheltered he probably doesn't think that she knows 
what a birth control implant is. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think he thinks I'm going to be able to fool this girl who doesn't know any better. And mm-hmm. I'm going to show, look, there was this weird metal thing in who you thought mm-hmm. was your friend. Turns out she's a simulation just to throw more doubt into yeah. her, into what reality or not reality is. Yeah. yeah. That's what I think he was doing. I guess for me, like it was just an unnecessary plot point. Like it didn't do anything for me it to was, have her it, have it that. To have him take it out. Like, to me, I was like, okay. See, I felt like there was enough other things that accomplished that goal that it mm-hmm. just felt a little, like, unnecessary. See, I think – I actually really liked it, and here's why. Because I think that was a really good way for Sister Paxton to show – you did not give me enough credit. You think mm-hmm. I'm just this naive person who doesn't know anything, but I just caught you in this lie, in this very clear, obvious lie. All these other theories about monopoly and iterations, like we can talk about it, but there's it's a hard way for me to prove that you're just a piece of shit liar. This mm-hmm. is a way for me to show, look, I know more than you think I know. I know you're bullshitting me and yeah. I'm not going to believe it and I'm not going to take it lightly. So and that's maybe not he, as naive as you think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, to to yeah. me, and I'm, you know, I'm not gonna, I actually, I, I think it kind of at this point, personally, I think the movie gets worse. Oh. I really loved the first half of this movie. Yeah. And then, and then I feel like it kind of, it, it, it it's not as strong throughout yeah. the, the rest of it, in mm-hmm. my opinion. <laughs> I agree. It's not as strong, but. I still like the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so at this point, we get Paxton's theory, right? Yeah, right. Like we mm-hmm. start to kind of, you know, she comes back where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, th- I, it wasn't actually a miracle. I think what happened is we were, you knew we'd be distracted. Yep. And so she does the whole like, okay, yeah, so you actually had someone come in and take her place and they died. And yeah. So, so we get her, her whole theory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And but he's she, like, okay. I think she also mentions too that the the person who so there was a person that was alive that came in and pretended to be the person who mm-hmm. had just died mm-hmm. and I think she mentions that that person betrayed you like she went off script. Mm-hmm. Right. So not only did you not give me enough credit but also now this person went off script. So your plan is yeah cuz she also yeah, brings unraveling. up that like he got thrown off when the guy came back. Like, mm-hmm. that wasn't part of his plan for mm-hmm. the guy to come back. So, like, she's kind of, like, poking holes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or it's like, your, it. your, your plan is, it's falling apart. Yes. Rapidly. And things aren't going as expected. And that's when he brings her to the little room, the little side room we saw him take the profit to. Um, right? Well, and first we see there's, we see through that there's the cellar door in the floor. We see the dead body. Yeah, because he's oh, like, then right. where's the dead body? Yes, and, right. Yeah, and she finds the hatch. Yeah. But um, yeah, then then she goes through. <laughs> and she goes through and he's like, okay, well, if you're right, there's a dead body down there. So if you believe it, go through. And she goes down and he closes the hatch. Yep. Which is, yeah, you know, it's like that, like, don't go in the spooky basement. <laughs> but then she does go through several doors. It's kind of like she, you know, opens one door goes to the next goes to the next it's very witchy vibes in there like very yeah, there's like hieroglyphics and see that to me was and- again bad like it yeah. just it, to me it was it was un- it wasn't bad it was unnecessary to me it was very like here is a spooky room that has satanist stuff and then it was like this room has creepy dolls no i this agree room it was, has, that like, part was forced to me that like yeah that was so forced like it was like Oh, look, we're going to make it scary. Honestly, I think they could have just made it a dark hallway. Yeah, I agree. That would have been scary enough. Like Because the the altar room upstairs with the two pews was so perfect yeah. for that fit him to a mm-hmm. T, like who he is. Mm-hmm. I felt like, yeah, it was just cheap. Like, oh, in yeah. case you didn't realize. It's like that kind of thing where sometimes I feel like movies think we're stupider than we are and they have to like lead us. Mm-hmm. It's like you didn't have to do that. We knew. Like you yes, could have just know taken this us is scary. Right. See, I now I I don't think those rooms were for us the audience. I actually 
appreciate them a bit because I think it was him again just trying to get in their heads because he knows he's attracting like these religious people Mm -hmm. who uh, who are maybe a little bit more sheltered or would be scared about stuff like that I don't think it was to try to like make us feel scared as the audience I think that was him again just trying to get in their head and make them afraid before he then tortures them more but then it's like it's like a closet site, closet sized spook. You know? Yeah, that's like, true. Like, even just being like, oh, I want it, you know, for them to be scared. It's like, I don't know. She kind of ran through it in like, and I actually five really think that like a uh, pitch black hallway would have been scarier. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the scariest part wasn't any of the thing that was in the rooms and like after she had to go door by door. The scariest thing mm-hmm. was that one of the doors was the bike lock. Yes. Right. The last, and, and I think to me, because of this whole like, I, it, like, I think there was like three, right, tiny creepy rooms mm-hmm. that she has to run through. T- it took me out of it. And I think it, it took the character out of it, too, where when she found the bike lock, to me, like, that should have been terrifying. I agree. Mm-hmm. And I wish that I wish we would have had less of a distraction before it and then given mm-hmm. that just a little bit longer. Because to me, I was like, oh, she has the key. Because he wanted her to have the key, yes. not which like how the fort yeah. could he have yeah. known? So I feel I kind of wish we would have had a pause of her mm-hmm. freaking out to be like, oh yes, he I have the key because I'm the one that's like here. he knew he it would here. be me. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. That was way scarier than the rooms. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, but it, it, like it, it was scarier, but they didn't give us enough time to sit with that. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think mm-hmm. I wish I, that was like one part. Where I was like, ah, this mm-hmm. was even a good setup. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but she has the key so she unlocks it and she goes into a room and there's yeah. just dog kennels of women <laughs> all dressed that. as the prophet had been like all in the cloak you know the dirty cloak and it's just a very like decrepit mud barren room where like it's just gross and they're just in cages cold yeah. Mm-hmm. I the the detail here of him with his watering can that was during them like him pouring yeah. water in little bowls for them to drink like, like dogs him watering them was so unsettling mm-hmm. yeah yeah that was rough and then he comes and he's like cutting one of their nails like oh he's like clipping their nails with like clipping their nails with like hedge clipper <laughs> like, yeah like while they're pool. talking he's like yeah clipping her nails but then like you know religion and and then Mm -hmm. this is when like paxton is saying like yeah like she you know he's like referring back to when the one ratted him out saying believe me and so he cuts her hand a finger off Mm -hmm. of that prophet and it's just very Mm -hmm. yeah and then yeah again he's just talking about how his his discovery of the one true religion is that religion is just a system of control that's right. basically what he what he is realized in all of his um because she says studies. right like she's like oh that's it like she, yeah, before yeah, that she's easy. like oh that's it it's control it's control mm-hmm. right yeah. like that's your religion yeah. mm-hmm. and then he says something about magic underwear yes yeah and then what happens? What she, what she, what she stabs him. Right? Or yeah, she. Well, took does she stab him? No, he stabs, well, he, her. Stabs her. he stabs her. He stabs her. Here's what I wrote. Because a lot of times, sometimes you guys can remember my notes or things from my notes better than me. I said, he says magic underwear, shows her in the model like a game. There's a mm-hmm. Dante's Inferno pick, and then he stabs her. Yes. Oh, yes, because I loved that scene where she's running, mm-hmm. and she's in the model. She's in the model. Mm-hmm. It's like she's in the model, but yeah. Because so, there was yeah. a model of the house, we should say. Mm-hmm. Did you guys ever have to read the the Dante's Inferno book? Mm-hmm. Or it's the seven layers of hell. Oh, it was actually pretty good. Like I had to read it. I think maybe I read it in college, like an undergrad mm-hmm. or something. Um, but I feel like some of the elements of this movie kind of get to that. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought they did a pretty good job of like showing that it's these layers, because yeah. that's very much what what the the Dante's Inferno. But is. then doesn't mm-hmm. she stab him? She stabs him too. They're both stabbed. Yeah, they're, they've both How been the stabbed. So I feel like she stabs him when he says magic underwear, but then he stabs her back. But maybe yes. I'm remembering. Yeah, like it, I, well, however they it stab each out. other, and then and they end up back in the in that the basement room because yep. she's she's running to get out, 
Yeah. And I just, the, the way when, because he's dying, she seems like she's dying. The way he like lays on her as he's oh, dying, like for uh-huh. her. On Paxton. Like, or oh, I mean on Barnes. Yeah. He like he crawls into her like into her. embrace like, her bosom crawls into like, her yeah. bosom like comfort me oh. as i'm dying or something but then he's also like then about to kill her mm-hmm. right yes and this is when then it it threw me off a bit cuz i thought at first oh okay dead sister barnes has come back to life yeah mm-hmm. but really i think she just wasn't dead yet and she just used the last little bit mhm of life and energy she had. Yes. Because then she she gets him. Mm-hmm. She Yeah, she whacks him with like a piece of wood with like nails. Oh, yeah, because we had seen earlier she had seen that. Mm-hmm. Like her attention was drawn to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think they like had set it aside. Mm-hmm. See, but, see that, that part, again, I, I kind of I was like, she's been dead. He dug through her arm, right. almost pulled out a vein. Mm-hmm. And she was just, she was just laying there. Well, because I think that's what bothered me about it (laughs) was that like nothing else about this movie was like a cheap scream. Like Mm -hmm. it wasn't, you know, a gimmick. It wasn't like, and I felt like her being the one to come back to life and kill him, I think was unnecessary. I think it would have been even better if he had just died on top of her. Yeah. Like that. Mm-hmm. And he had mm-hmm. actually died. Like we saw that he died mm-hmm. instead of this. Because yeah. I was like, it just, I don't know. Like to me, it felt canned. And I kind of liked it. Yeah. I don't know. Really? Yeah. I was I, a fan. Yeah. It didn't feel like, wait, she died 45 minutes ago. This doesn't make any sense. And then no, she died I, right after. I think it could be that she was dying, but mm-hmm. that she was able to kind of cling to life a bit and get one last burst of energy mm. i don't know i choose to believe <laughs> you're the belief he door through her arm that and i are the disbelief yeah. door yeah but people dig through people's arms all the time. i don't think yeah. that's true Laura. and then have no <laughs> bodily reaction <laughs> yeah so maybe they just should have made her react in a bit more pain and see right and then have, die i think they should have gotten hints of right. life hints if of they life. were gonna bring her back because again it was like i swear that was 45 minutes ago yeah yeah. she's been dead like right. that was so long that it was like yeah. th- that wouldn't be possible but i don't remember be. then how does paxton get out so there's she realizes that that model that had been in the room with the uh-huh. pews it's almost kind of like a puzzle box that she has oh, to like she, yes. there's a, a little tool that she can yeah. use to then yes. get out yeah that's right she sees where like the switch mm-hmm. for the door is through okay. the model that's right thank you and yeah, she gets out. Gets like, out. And it, it, it had been really stormy, mm-hmm. you know, but I just, I just remember as the movie ends, like my thought was, okay, so like by the time they get to her, like, what do you say? Like when the emergency people come and find you in the snow and you've been stabbed, you're obviously like tra- traumatized, like how do you even begin to tell them what just happened to you? I, I think you tell them to just go inside. Like that's a fucking yeah. wild story. <laughs> it's like, look, just go inside. You'll just you'll go figure inside. out. You'll just go inside. Like they'll think you're insane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like... So she gets out and she sees a butterfly that she had talked about earlier. How when when she dies, she wants to come back as a butterfly and she's gonna land on her friends and family's fingers, and the butterfly lands on her finger. But then it cuts, and then the butterfly's gone. Yeah, which so I think. That- I took that as like, oh, there was no butterfly. It yeah. was just it was a so, hallucination. So yeah, you either can choose whether there was a butterfly or she was hallucinating a, a butterfly mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that's it. Boom. Ends. Yep. I mean, I loved the end, that ending, like of her just barely getting out mm-hmm. and kind of just collapsing and done. And I also yeah. loved the the philosophical thing of it, of like, you know, she sees this butterfly, but then it's gone. And so it's like, do you believe it was a butterfly? Do mm-hmm. you not believe? Do you believe it was a hallucination? Are you right. going faith? Or are you going science? Like, what do you? Yep. Yeah. Um. So I actually, I really liked that kind of yeah uh, unclear ending. I did too, and just yeah. dramatic, like done, mm-hmm. like because mm-hmm. yeah, like you said earlier, like it was it 
almost in real time. So like by the time it ends, like we as the audience are like, we have not had a break. Like there was not one moment where we weren't like, at least that Mm -hmm. I wasn't completely engaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So by the time it ends, you kind of like take a deep breath and you're like, damn, like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wild. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I will say just that the ending wasn't as strong as the beginning. I was, and maybe that was, you know, like, I feel like because to me, the buildup was so good. Mm -hmm. Like there was so much buildup. I wanted a bigger ending or like a bigger reveal. Like when you, when we get to that moment where, you know, he's like, oh, the one true religion. And you realize it's like, oh, it's control. Like I was so, I was dissatisfied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that was it. That that's. All of mm-hmm. that, like mm-hmm. all of this, mm-hmm. all of your research. Yeah. Yes. It, because really? like, there's so much mm-hmm. that he put into this. And it was, you know, I it kind of left me being like, is he just doing this all for like when a random missionary comes to his, like what? I don't get the the game. Like yeah. he's spreading his religion. Yeah. But he and kills, his people. plan is to kill them. So yeah. is he really? Religion is control of their their life. That's like the ultimate control. But they die, so he's not really spreading it. Yeah, I mean, he's not going to well, get a lot of numbers true. this way. You know? Yeah, he's not increasing his numbers. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Maybe he doesn't need to. He just needs to control them in that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I I Well, because I wondered. I, I was like, it. I was like, at first I thought, oh, maybe like he doesn't kill Paxton mm-hmm. because she becomes another spare prophet. Like maybe mm-hmm. that's what his his thing is, is yeah. that like the girl that doesn't die is who mm-hmm. becomes his like the next prophet, the next yeah. spare prophet. Mm-hmm. But then he killed her, and I was like, "Well, tried to kill her," and I was like, "Well, okay, He's just killing all of them." Yeah, yeah. No, okay. One other thing, I, I and like I, I don't know, because I, I really liked Hugh Grant in this. One other maybe critique is like. I feel like we got way too much of the three of them together, which again is why I think I was so in it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then I started to kind of fall off because like at the beginning, it's believable. Right. You know, it's like they're here to make this pitch as missionaries and like he's charming. And maybe there's like little hints of, you know, a little creepy that he kind of saves. But it's like, come on, like once like the door doesn't open and he sends you into a creepy basement. And, you know, like, it's like, it. W- once you get the reveal that, like, clearly, like, you are all in danger, I feel like there's so many scenes with the three of them together, where they're, yeah, like, holding like, the letter like opener, or they, like, where it's like, okay, guys, just stop letting him talk. Like, right. when I thought, when they had the little tube to talk downstairs, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, that that's what's going to happen now. He's going to lock them in. Maybe there's, like, a whole maze they have to get through, and, like, they're not going to be in the same room anymore. Mm-hmm. But it's like, no, they're in the same room all the time. Yeah. Like, to me, it was like, you're, you've been unsafe for 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> well, what are they going to do? They can't earlier. get out. <laughs> well, They yeah, should have stabbed, stabbed him way them. earlier. Yeah, I can see that. But then they yeah, locked in the that. house with him. But he did say that the door would open in uh, the in next the day. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 So but I will say, him. like, I, I liked the uniqueness of such a small cast. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, I actually mm-hmm. think it was kind of cool that like yeah you've got the the prophet and then the other mission the elder yeah um, but other than that like mm-hmm. it's just these three and yeah. i think that part of why the movie works so well is because they did work so well as a group like their chemistry because mm-hmm. if it hadn't been on the movie would not have worked at all i think yeah yeah you know yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm just saying that they lost me at the end. It, it was more believable <laughs> at the beginning, where it was like you can excuse his creepiness. Mm-hmm. But then, it went, it went, once it got to a certain point for me, it got to that kind of like horror movie. You're just making bad decisions. Okay, mm. but I actually will say here's one point that I disagree on: mm-hmm. is what they did capture really well. Mm-hmm. Was that is how Utah girls particularly LDS girls, are raised. Like, there was one yeah. point where they knew they were fucked, right? Mm-hmm. Like, they're going to die. And they just they knew for a long time. That. And 
you know, Barnes goes down the stairs and as Paxton goes down the stairs, she stops and she says, okay, well, you know, thank you for sharing your, you know, religion and you know we really just appreciate it we'll talk to you later like bye yeah she like thanks him before, yes. before and i was like that nails <laughs> like it really does like that uh-huh. is yeah. exactly what yes a I, missionary would do yeah. even though like she's probably going to her death her like ingrained politeness mm-hmm. she can't escape it it's like okay well thanks okay I thanks. Died. Well, and but, actually that is i mean I feel like aside from just like, oh, you know, that's how she was likely raised and stuff. Like, I do think there's that, like, if you're in danger, you want to maybe roll with the situation. Befriend you know? your you wanna, captor. Yeah. yeah. And you she made a point of that nice to Barnes. To him. And yeah. Like, we do, don't want to yeah. get him upset. Like, yeah. So, like, yeah, I, I don't think that was like, oh, fully like, oh, she's naive and that's the way she was raised. It was like, that's like a survival yeah Mm -hmm. tactic you know because they did both have opposing you know barnes was like well no we need to defy him and challenge him and argue with him Mm -hmm. and then you know paxton was like no we need to make sure not to make him mad and to like so it Mm -hmm. was interesting that they had two very different Mm -hmm. yeah ways Mm -hmm. yeah interesting Mm. interesting Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's one that sits with you for sure yeah i think it's been a few days since we all I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> and yeah, I feel like it's definitely one that like sits with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye, everybody. <laughs> oh, Penny got up because she thought we were leaving. Oh, sorry. It's like her train. It's not quite. <laughs> All right. So I will be interested on where you're going to take us, Laura. Yeah. For your psych segment. And just remember, she's not a real doctor. But these aren't real heretics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or they are. I don't know. There's no way to know. You so I us. I did ask I did ask our dad who we went to the movie with because I wasn't exactly sure. I said, Well, what what does a heretic mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's yeah. so a heretic is someone who kind of goes against the the common belief. Mm-hmm. So someone who kind of like defies that that norm belief. So that's in what a very means. outspoken way, like yeah. in a very loud mm-hmm. manner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I had a feeling this was going to be a little bit of a longer episode. So we're not going to go too psych heavy, yeah. especially because I I know I have I have different beliefs than um, apparently the norm, but. Uh, we're going to talk about just a little bit about psychology of being religious mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like what that means. So um, overall uh, numbers for people being religious. So as of 2023, approximately 70%, 75% of Americans, and I, I focus just on American um, religion, mm-hmm. o- over 75% of Americans identify with a specific religious faith. Which to me, I don't know. I was surprised by how high that was. I wonder how the question is phrased. Like, yeah. is it current, or is it that? Oh well, I grew up religious, but I'm not. Like, well, and then there's count? like culturally, you know, yes. mm-hmm. right? Where it's like I don't know. Like, I feel like the way that question was phrased, like, was phrased. Like to me, it's like I'm not, you know, an active person in a church at all. But like, if if, the, if it was asked a certain way, I would probably say Catholic, mm-hmm. right? You know. So like well, I I wonder how it was phrased. It and it does then narrow down because then there's like mm-hmm. types of like people who identify as strongly religious, people who identify as um they are part of a faith but they never go to church, people that go to church a couple times. So it does it does get down to okay. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. to the, the That's detail. higher than I would have thought though. That is high though. Yeah. So but the majority of Americans um identify as Christian, 68%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, um there is some difference of thought based off of who you ask of but i would say lds do can they they consider themselves christian right Mm -hmm. um so seven percent identify as non-christian religions and about 22 uh to 23 percent have say they have no religious preference um which this is actually something that that i had talked to my dad about not too long ago he talked about they're referred to as the nuns not nuns as in 
women who are, you know, in their like, <laughs> yeah. habits, Habit. mm-hmm. but as an N O N E, they have no religion, none religion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what's interesting though, is the percentage of Christians has declined. So, um, 87% of Americans said that they were Christian in 1973 to 68% say that in 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, but then some projects projections suggest that people who identify as Christian in you know the US uh, could shrink between 35 to 54% of the population um, by about 2070. Mm-hmm. Or uh, while the nuns uh, Mm -hmm. could rise uh, to 34 to 52%. Wow. Damn. Mm -hmm. Which is just kind of interesting how the trends have kind of gone. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, And kind of where we're going with that. Especially when you just think about how it makes, regardless of what people say, it makes a difference in things like politics and policy and things like Mm -hmm. that. Just Mm -hmm. us. Yeah. (laughs) So it's also kind of interesting to see about how... um, generations like the the demographics change so i pulled up this graph where it shows by how many women uh and men identify as either protestant catholic another world religion atheist or nothing Mm -hmm. and each of those groups in that order has drastically declined so um so by generation Mm -hmm. so things like 48% of women who are boomers would say that they are Protestant, while 17% of women who are boomers say that they are are nothing, or 7% say they're atheist, versus you come to Generation Z, 27% say that they're Protestant, 38% say they're nothing, and 12%. So it's just, it's very Mm -hmm. much the whole Mm -hmm. thing is just shifting toward less religious. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. One more like stat, just because I think it like kind of it gets no, to it, the like, psychology. It's good to have the mm-hmm. reference, right? Yeah. So what what I thought was actually really really interesting is the the mean age of the ten the ten youngest religions mm-hmm. in the United States. So this is when you take a religion and you you look at their age, which religion is young? Mm-hmm. So not the youngest, but Mormon is in the top youngest religions oh, in yeah. america right but not the youngest actually mm. um their their mean age is about 44 years old as of 2020 2022 mm-hmm. um whereas things um actually actually it does say that like christians are even younger mm. interesting well but christians like that's such a lot big... yeah that is interesting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um so Mormons, yeah, their their mean mean age is forty four, whereas atheists' mean age is forty three, but agnostic yeah. age mean age is forty three as well. Yeah, I mean that's, that's not tracking. Like, look at Utah's population, right? right. Where it's like it's all it's always so young. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like yeah, that's. <laughs> mm-hmm. So part of why I like went down that rabbit hole is because what I was thinking about for Hugh Grant's character, what is oh Mr. Reed, Mr. Reed, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Mr. Reed. Mr. Yeah, Reed. Reed. That's so good. <laughs> I like the dad jokes in this. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I feel like it was kind of interesting because I wondered, you know, where, what was his history like? Like, was he religious when he was younger? And as he's gotten older, mm-hmm. this has developed. Um, because when you look at psychology, technically, people tend to become more religious as they get older, specifically women. Hmm. Um, so when, when you become a little bit older, a higher percentage of you tends to be more religious. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So regardless of your like beliefs or not, um, I'm just going to talk about in general, no judgment, but why would people believe in religion versus not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some cognitive tendencies as to why you might believe in religion, um, People tend to want to see patterns and intentional designs, even if something is chaotic. So uh, let's take the butterfly on on her finger for an example, if that was real. 
Could it be that some random butterfly just happened to fall on her finger? Sure. Mm -hmm. But if you want to see a pattern because you want to believe that a loved one is coming to give you a blessing or something like that, you're going to see that pattern, even if it's just a random butterfly. Mm -hmm. Humans tend to do that. Yeah. So typically, if you are more, if you have the cognitive tendency of being a little bit more intuitive, you will more often be religious versus if you're the type of person that's a bit more analytical, you will tend to be less religious. I'm a little bit more analytical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, another cognitive tendency is if you, if you sometimes limit the uh, exposure to those who critique you you can kind of live in your own bubble. Now, this is a thing that I think happens religion aside. Like with social media, we all live in our little like information mm -hmm. um, vacuums right now where you yeah. kind of limit people's views that oppose you. I mean, the algorithm is going to show you what you what you want to see. It's, it's real. The algorithm exactly. is real. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. And it's going to show you what yep. you want to see. That's its mm -hmm. job is to right. keep you happy. So you keep going there. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. But I would say from from some of my experiences um, from um, things in the church, it's a little bit even before things like social media algorithms was like that on, oh, the, this is something that's going to kind of critique the church or challenge the church, that's not something we even are going to look at because right. that, mm -hmm. that doesn't follow what we think. So it helps reinforce those beliefs. Yeah. So also people have psychological needs that religion can uh, help or, or kind of feed, I guess. One is giving reason. So instead of just the world being chaotic, there's reasons for things. And it can, honestly, it can be very emotionally and intellectually comforting. Mm -hmm. Religion can. It can also, it can help you understand your place and give meaning to your existence. Because, you know, that's a really scary thing if you think of like, nothing matters. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but it can, it can really help give that comfort and also a, a sense of meaning. And also, religion can give you really great social connections. It can help you bond. It can help provide a sense of community. Um, it can provide a lot of psychological benefits like structure, purpose, moral guidance. It can also give you this sense of safety because especially if you believe in an eternal afterlife. So, so you know, LDS uh, people believe they'll live forever in the mm -hmm. afterlife, you know, with the family they've created. Well, that's awesome because you don't have to stress about dying because you're going to live forever anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so some studies I found suggest that LDS members have lower rates of depression, anxiety um, compared to other religious groups or non-religious groups. Mm hmm I have on an opinion the, on that statistic, but you well, so here well, <laughs> on the other end. Um, the idea of perfectionism in the LDS religion is huge. Um, and in other studies that has shown to lead to um, some pretty intense body image and social comparison problems that are very damaging, especially because of that pressure to conform. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, I think, depends on you and how you fit in the religion. Um, it can have lots of benefits for some people. It can have some damages for others. Um, okay, so physical benefits. Some studies show that prayer and meditation, and I actually pulled out my old psychology books. Like before, I like I used to do that when we first were starting, and then I kind of just yeah. got to online, but I actually pulled them out again. And some of them talked about how um, prayer and meditation is associated with a higher lifespan hmm. in people. And it's hard to tell if, if, it's causation or, you know, correlation. Um, but it could be that it reduces some stress hormones and builds a stronger immune system because you are, again, with this, having this sense of purpose and community. Mm -hmm. I mean, meditation, you know, is, right. is helpful. Like I, I could see that. I believe that. I mean, the Buddhist has been doing that for a long time. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's definitely benefits to it. So for the, for the Mormons specifically, um, they could have health benefits to their religion because, uh, well, they don't drink. Right. Or yep. smoke. 
um, or smoke and and they're uh, wanting to treat their body as a temple, it could lead to, you know, you physically, you work out, you try to mm-hmm. keep your body looking great. Now that mm-hmm. also right. can be harmful with that idea of perfectionism, but um, yeah, it can lead to better health in general. Mm-hmm. Other than like all those temple. freaking sodas. Yeah. <laughs> and all the Botox. But you can get the, the sugar-free Botox. ones though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I also thought physically another benefit to to their religion could just be, I mean, it's keeping their culture and society alive because, you know, you have yeah. so many kids that, you know, mm-hmm. physically is going to ensure your survival. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So some personal history onto why you might be religious versus not. Um, it's just, you know, the culture you grow, you have grown up in. Mm -hmm. um your family so it can if your family is a certain religion you know mormon religion or another one um it just gives you that cultural immersion and it can really just put these deep ingrained beliefs in you that you know if they're if helpful to you great if they're not they can be so hard to overcome because it's just it's something that has been in you and surrounding you and all of your family for so long that it's just like super, super deeply there. Mm -hmm. Um, And it becomes a part of your core identity. And I feel like, especially we kind of, we get to that in this movie, there's a lot of social reinforcement in churches to continue to do the practices of the church and believe Um, you're going to get a lot of praise and comfort and support from your family for that or maybe kind of shunned if you don't do that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's just a lot of social pressure yeah um and then yeah you just have these personal experiences that then if they're interpreted as religious they reinforce it so i feel like in this movie especially like they just did such a good job of showing that right from the get-go this girl who is probably not very familiar with pornography she watches this scene sees this girl having an orgasm and she interprets this as that i just saw jesus sucking the soul out of her rather than no girl she just had an orgasm (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) so because your your religious belief just she took that as reinforcing i know now god exists and this is the this is the right religion Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm which is just like someone else seeing that from a different lens is going to interpret that so differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm not going to like take a stance on it either way. I'm just going to say that's yeah. why some people might be religious. Yeah. There's your psych. Yeah. We're not yeah. here to tell you what, what to do. We sure aren't. <laughs> that's, that's not what we're here for. We sure aren't, you guys. <laughs> but we can share our experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Um, okay, so for some fun facts, um, this is a very new movie, right? As we just talked about, <laughs> so not as much is like out and available. So I found a few from just um, I think the writer, producer, director, like the little duo did like an ask me anything on Reddit, and then I like watched a couple interviews. So not as many fun facts today, but I'll go through a few. Um, so one, I feel like I've seen a lot that this is Hugh Grant's first horror film. It's mm. technically not. He was what? in this like kind of B movie horror film called The Lair of the White Worm that came what? out in 1988. I think it was one of his like very first movies. In an interview, someone mentioned it like, oh, this is your second horror film. And he was like, I think the only scary thing about that was my acting ability back then. <laughs> so <laughs> that's amazing. It's not coming with high praise, but I there's another one out there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Lair they of will the be white referencing worm. that later. Yeah, the mm-hmm. layer of the white worm. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Oh, one small thing because we talked about like how accurate you know the movie is. Um, one small thing that I looked up is apparently missionaries. There's a scene where they take off their coats, and so they take off the name tag off their coat and like put it on their shirt, so they still have their name tag on. Right. Apparently, missionaries just wear two name tags, so oh. they wouldn't do that. They have one on their shirt and then they have one on their coat. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So a small detail that maybe they could have, they could have fixed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, The budget for this movie was less than $10 million, which is very small, but Mm -hmm. also again, tiny cat, like how much should they pay Hugh Grant? That was probably most of the budget. Right. Right. And honestly, (laughs) the set was just those few rooms. Yeah. The set was tiny. The cast was tiny. Like it, 
it makes sense. Like it didn't feel like like I don't like it did not all. feel like no. a cheap movie. It felt it like not. a film. Like they did a good job with it. I agree. Um I'm pretty sure they've already made that money back. And again, mm. we haven't even seen the full weekend closing numbers. No, like so. it just came out. It right. just mm-hmm. came out. <laughs> um, it's already over that. So it's definitely gonna make a, a profit. Yeah. Um apparently while preparing for this, and I think it's just something he does, Hugh Grant creates like a bio for his characters and he said that he gets kind of obsessive with it mm. you know just the stress of working on a movie so he said that for this one it was hundreds of pages oh my gosh the bio he created because if there wasn't me he like wasn't sure about like he would go and ask like the writers or the producers or the directors and like uh-huh. make notes and like i feel like that's what led these characters to be so good and I think so. Char- like, it felt like you knew his character and i'm yes. sure part of it was like the amount of prep he did it was very that well developed character depth mm-hmm. yeah um the picture of a young hugh grant with his dog was a picture that hugh grant just had um and let them use for the set um, there was like so a fraction of a second where you see the little like yeah. frame photo of him with his dog that's so cute <laughs> um the duo i think i haven't named them uh, the duo is Scott Beck and Brian Woods. They like wrote, directed, produced it, and they've been kind of working like together for like a while. I love when like that's a thing. Me too. Like I love when like there's just like two people that are like, we're just gonna do things together. Mm-hmm. Like we're mm-hmm. just a duo to, yep. that does mm-hmm. it all. Um that. but they wrote the original screenplay for A Quiet Place. So oh. they sold that screenplay. Oh. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. So we, we, yeah, they've been, they've been doing other stuff. Hmm. Um, let's see. Oh, from the ask me anything, they did clarify that like they wanted the ending to be ambiguous because obviously Uh people have asked like, what was your, (laughs) what were you hoping the ending would be? And Mm -hmm. they were like, we wanted it to be ambiguous. That was the Mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. It was like, leave it up for interpretation. Right. The okay, I have two fun facts about the end credits, and then that's it. One is the song at the end of the movie is Knocking on Heaven's Door, and it's Sophie Thatcher, the actress who plays one of the the missionaries. She's the one singing it. Really, I didn't realize she's also like a like a like she also like sings like she's also a musician. That's cool. So there, I mean, again, we talked about it, but there there's a big monologue about iterations. And so they right. kind of, they felt like that would be a fun way to end it. it was like have a song be related, yeah, like covered by someone else. Because so. Laura and I were saying like, oh, they should have been playing the Lana Del Rey, yes, version. But then we were like, I bet they just like couldn't get it, so they, they had to thought do about it. Else. That was that was one of the ones they considered. Okay, but then yeah. they figured it's like, well, we have her; she's willing right. to sing the cover of it. No, I like that. <laughs> so that's why they am going with it. But they did think about doing the Lana okay. Del Rey. Because that's what I was the end credit. I was waiting. I was waiting for that. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, And then the last thing, which I didn't. So uh, did you guys wait through the end credits? Yes. So one thing that was in the credits that I didn't actually notice when I saw it, but there was a statement in the end that said no generative AI was used in the making of this film. We talked about that. We did notice that. Yeah. So that was them just being like, hey, we're just going to make this clear. And I would love if movies start doing this i love that because there have been some movies that have come out recently where it's like that's ai yes Mm -hmm. you know i i love that they stated that yeah Yeah, me too and i just yeah i loved it they Mm -hmm. it was their idea to put it it, to put it in this is an a24 film a24 was totally cool with that nice absolutely leave it in um so yeah i love it Mm. One thing that I thought was interesting is like I did see like little clips on like reels, like not official previews, but everything that I saw, they only said, hi, we're so-and-so from the Church of Jesus Christ. They did not say of Latter-day Saints in the previews in any that I saw. So like when I went into it, I was like, I wonder if they're making it that it is LDS or if they're trying just to leave it like ambiguous but then immediately we saw that oh no they are calling it lds but i just thought that was interesting Mm -hmm. it was interesting for the trailer yeah because it's like they didn't have to be mormon for the the movie to work 
Right. But it worked with them being LDS. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, no, that's interesting. I didn't watch too many trailers, but that's interesting. Yeah. That's they, like, pitched it. All right. Well, I think we've got some differing opinions tonight. <laughs> so I'll be curious to know yeah. how you feel yeah. about it. Because on Spooky Sips, we don't do stars. We do sips. So out of five sips of wine. Or Diet Coke. Or Diet day. Coke. Whatever you're sipping on. Or blueberry pie. Sip, yeah, or blueberry pl- pie. <laughs> <laughs> blueberry disease. <laughs> How many blueberries do you give this movie? It's okay. Loud. I'll I'll go first. Um, I really like this movie. I feel like I want to watch it again. I loved the characters in it. I love the tension in it. I do feel like, yeah, it changed a bit, but I almost you know, the second half versus the first half. But I actually, the meaning that I put to to those changes, I actually enjoyed. I give it a solid four. I really like this movie. Four yeah, six. that's that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I want to give it a four, but I do think there were just a couple things. So I'm a 3.75 because I really did like it. Like, I actually really liked it. And I also want to see it again. And I think everybody should go see it. Mm-hmm. So that's okay. I'm, I'm in the same ballpark. I, right. I think it's clear that I didn't like it as much as you guys. But like, I loved the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. I actually, I loved more than the first half. Like, it, it's, I, it's just the end that I, I think kind of didn't land mm-hmm. for me. And, and maybe part of it was like my own expectations of like where I wish they would have gone. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still very solid. And all three actors are incredible. Like it's it's crazy yes. to me that like I watched three people, just three people talk for right. like two hours. And, I was and it held my attention. And I was engaged the whole time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The entire time I was paying attention. Yeah. Um you could tell they like researched it really well. Like it, it was well made. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I'm, I'm like I'm right below. I, I was thinking a solid 3.5. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I it's, think that's it's yeah. solid. I'd recommend people watch it. And I love the premise of it. Like, yeah. it was a really unique story. And it's it's one of those ones where I do feel like it is delicate, I say in quotations, mm-hmm. because like religion is a tricky topic and people have a lot of opinions on it. Yeah. And I loved the way that they handled it. Like, it was yeah. a great story. Yeah. yeah. Well, and mm-hmm. this is, you know, I'm, I'm taking it directly from um, the writers of it, but like, their goal was, you know, religion isn't something you like talk about at the dinner table, like with a lot of people. That's not that that's a, that's considered a sensitive topic. Right. Mm-hmm. And the great thing about movies, you know, is it lets the screen have that conversation and then it lets you talk about it totally in a way where you're talking about the movie. But it, it opens up exactly. the conversation on what should be a sensitive topic. So, like, that's, yeah. the, that's the beauty of movies. Right. It it can take in these sensitive topics and open up the conversation even just no, a little bit. No, I love bit. that. I totally mm-hmm. agree. Yeah. Totally. Um, well, okay. It is November. So if you know Spooky Sips, you know what's happening. Speaking of awkward conversations around the dinner table. <laughs> we've decided on our annual Thanksgiving movie <laughs> that it's going to be Thanksgiving. <laughs> Um, guys, it is a really... pretty low rating when you Google it. Um, <laughs> it's also not not rated, which is cool. Oh, um, oh my gosh, it's not. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, um, <laughs> it's only about an hour too. Okay, so. wait, are you serious? Yeah, from two thousand eight, right? Like, <laughs> I think it's two thousand nine. Wait, maybe on, is there more than one things killing? They did honestly, make a, there might they did make a sequel and a third one. Oh no, there's f- four? No, no there's like three. when we've looked up Thanksgiving horror movies, I feel like th- there's there's a lot of puns on uh-huh. Thanksgiving. You guys, I'm just going to read you the quick synopsis. Okay. Cuz I think it'll help you decide to go see it. A possessed turkey terrorizes five college students during their Thanksgiving break. Yes. 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 I am very excited for this, you guys. Okay, it's when, just naturally the next movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when we go to watch it, we'll have to look it up because, yeah, IMDb and Google say it's 2008, but Wikipedia says 2009. So we'll just have to make sure we're all watching the same thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm guessing you haven't seen it. <laughs> if you have, I want to talk to you. But if you oh my gosh, yes. haven't, <laughs> get watching, get sipping, and we'll see you Thanksgiving week with Thanksgiving. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Spooky Sips. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you're listening. To stay up to date on all the spooky things we're up to, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at spooky sips underscore podcast. And if you want to help support the podcast, consider buying us a coffee or really a cocktail. We are completely independent, so every little bit goes a long way to keeping our podcast running and improving. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks.